Hello again, YouTube, and welcome to the epic finale of our Dragon Ball Z movie review series. And uh, today we are going to be talking about some of the stuff that was only is only available in Japan um, that we don't have any. Unless you have access to the internet. Unless you have access to the internet. When I say only uh, uh, available in Japan, I mean we don't really have a good English release of any of these. Although the um, one of them is actually a pretty good fan dub. Right, it hasn't been officially released by Funimation over here yet, and I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, it's not like I doubt it ever will, but I don't know when. Exactly. So. I mean, they've had so long now to do it. Um, so yeah, we're yeah. we're gonna be talking about those, and then at the end we're gonna do a, a sort of retrospective type thing and list our top five uh, movies that we've done. So let's start things off with episode of Bardock. This is, of course, infamous for being the moment when Bardock goes Super Saiyan. And, and Bill, since since uh, me and Ian both sort of gave our general opinions of it in the last video, since this was your first time seeing it, why don't you give sort of your gut reactions to seeing episode of Bardock? It was exactly what I expected it was going to be. <laughs> um, let me just throw it out, out there. It's Bardock going Super Saiyan. And that's about it. Um... I liked it. It was it was fairly entertaining. I, I can all the criticism I've, I've heard hurled at it from other DBZ fans is totally fair. Mm -hmm. The continuity makes no sense. The premise is downright retarded. Um, uh, the concept of uh, I mean the the whole con continuity of the legendary Super Saiyan itself makes no sense because in the original canon, in every every single interpretation of the original canon. There has never been a Super Saiyan that was not a giant monkey before Goku. Exactly. That was the legend, that was what Frieza feared, and that was what has been passed down for, throughout the Saiyan's history. That was the whole, that's what made Goku special. That's what set him apart from other Saiyans, is that he could control it, and he didn't have to be a, a, a Nizaru to be a, a Super Saiyan. Exactly, and that, this, that all they would have needed to do in this movie to get rid of that criticism would have been to have the moon come up during the fight and have him turn into a Super Saiyan giant monkey. Right, because Bardock still has his tail. Exactly. Yep. Um, that was my that was probably my biggest problem because it it just because it's mentioned directly throughout the entire thing, it's not as enjoyable to watch Bardock go Super Saiyan. Yeah, yeah. Because um, it's very distracting that the continuity is just a disaster. And it wouldn't be a big problem if that if they didn't mention it directly. If it had just been Bardock got thrown back in time, fought Frieza's ancestor, went Super Saiyan, and that was it. But because they had to directly... Because it's essentially a prequel to the entire Frieza saga, it calls attention to the fact that it's shooting... that it's fucking up its own canon... And that annoyed the shit out of me. Right, right. Um, my biggest continuity mistake, a problem with it, wasn't even that. It's the 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 uh, the creatures that are on the planet when he goes back in time. Yeah, what the fuck were they? <laughs> well, it, uh, whatever they're supposed to be isn't really. It, that's neither here nor there. They're aliens, you know. But the thing is, it it's another example of how this messes with the show's continuity because the, the planet Vegeta was apparently used to be called Planet Plant, which is not correct and is really a stupid name for a planet. And the yeah, it's like it was always Vegeta. Yeah, no, well, I don't know if it was always called Vegeta. I don't know if they ever say that specifically. But the race that is supposed to be there before the Saiyans are the Tuffles. Right. Now, and, now, yeah. Whether or not these creatures just died out before the Tuffles evolved, I guess that's a possibility. But there is no way they they look at the technology Frieza's ancestor is using. Yeah, it's, it's, this can't be more than two hundred years in the past. I guarantee it. That is true. It's not that much less advanced. So that's just another big, big fuck up that they make. Um, also, how does Bardock go back in time? I don't know. That's that's the elephant in the room, I suppose. The fuck. Um, what happened to his psychic powers, and how did he go back in time? 
Yep. What happened to a psychic power is is was that part of it? I mean, they don't explain. They don't even mention the the psychic powers, which is bizarre because they they make constant reference to Bardock, Father Goku. Exactly. They um, show um, updated scenes from that where you get shots yeah. of his soldiers lying dead all over the place. I guess it's not in direct continuity with it. It has to be though because they they make direct reference to it. Yeah, but um, it, it could be that it's. It could be that not all the events in this version happen the same way as they did in that in that special. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess. Um, here's my other biggest problem with it, aside from the continuity stuff and the time travel fucking shit. Um, this, the whole point of this really is to display what if Bardock went Super Saiyan? Right. It's such a it's such a fan fiction type idea. <laughs> It is – this is basically fan fiction with great animation, and let me just say that. The animation is gorgeous. Oh, yeah. I really enjoy the animation in this. Um, yeah. It looks a little bit – okay, my only problem with the animation is that it looks a little bit too Americanized, but even then, it's so fluid and so high def, it's really – and three-dimensional, it's really easy to forgive and get into the action. What? But, good segue into my biggest problem with it aside from all that continuity stuff. When you're supposed to be displaying when, – when the, when the sole purpose of your little special is to have the novelty of seeing Bardock go Super Saiyan, really the thing that should be the best part of the episode is the fight. Right. And it's not. The fight is really not that great. No. Because Bardock d really doesn't do anything. Again, the, anim the animation in the fight is spectacular, but in terms of just – choreography and all that good stuff it's it's not that much that we haven't seen before it's it's nothing it's not it's i would say it's even worse than a lot of the stuff we we've, we've seen in these in these movies we've been reviewing it's it could even be the worst because it's just like so okay it, it kind of reminded me of the ending of bojack unbound when when go when gohan went super saiyan 2 mm -hmm. and he just kind of walked towards bojack and killed him see I'm okay with that because it did involve – there was a, a awesome fight before that. In this, Bar Bardock gets into a fight with Frieza's henchman, which is which is over in like two seconds. And then he gets into a – oh, Frieza, I'm sorry, uh, Lord Chill. Um, yeah. He gets into a fight with Lord Chill's henchman. Because apparently everybody in this race has ice puns for names. Yeah, yeah, something like Arnold, that. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, uh, Mr. Freeze is obviously the the creator of this race. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um. Uh. Yeah, and that name was stupid too. Lord Chill. Ugh. Um. But uh, my, my problem is the action is really not that fun to watch. So you get to the the fight scene between Chill and Bardock, and before Bardock goes Super Saiyan. He just gets knocked down, and then it, it starts to happen. He starts to go Super Saiyan. And then the rest of the fight cons, uh, consists of Bardock slowly walking towards Chill, blocking energy attacks, then gets up to him, grabs his arms, swirls him around like the Hulk. Yeah. Like, like that scene in the Avengers where the Hulk beats Loki into the ground, then shoots an energy blast at him, and that kills him. Well, and see, it, and they really couldn't have had a good fight because Lord Chill is in his first form the entire time. There's nothing a first form member of this race can do against a Super Saiyan. They should have had him be like cooler, you know. And yeah, and maybe, and maybe the idea is supposed to be that they haven't learned how to do that yet. But I don't care that you're, the whole point of this is to display the Super Saiyan transformation, and it is fucking spectacular in this animation. Right. But we want to see Bardock do something with it. If you're going to ha have that amazing concept of Bardock going Super Saiyan, you better have a goddamn good fight to follow it, and they don't. It's really not that good. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's the whole thing with this entire episode is that decent concepts, terrible execution. Right. One concept that I actually really like that they bring up, but I don't think they focus on it enough other than that it's the reason that Chill comes to the planet – is that they give us the origin of that liquid that's in the Saiyan pods, you know, the, the the healing stuff. The medical equipment, yeah. Yeah, they give they give us the origin of that, and it was it originally belonged to these aliens, apparently. So I really liked that idea. That was uh, clever. Um, yes, I agree. 
but mostly, yeah, that this thing really just gets by on the novelty of seeing Super Saiyan Bardock and also the animation itself, which is so good. Um, yeah, and it's it's like, and also the concept of of Bardock going Super Saiyan. If you think about it too hard, it falls apart because it's like, how can you have Frieza's ancestor see Bardock go Super Saiyan and it somehow doesn't like? It doesn't have as the big of, as big of an impact as it does because in the show they never say that any of Frieza's ancestors ever actually fought a Super Saiyan. No, I don't think that that was what it was. I think it was just Frieza was afraid of the fact that these Saiyans who were like his best slaves would turn against him. He he's a power freak, and the Super Saiyan is the direct threat to that. The, it was no, it wasn't like a Super Saiyan beat up one of his ancestors. It was just. It, it's just this concept of power control. It's the same reason why a dictator doesn't want um, people to have hope. You know what I mean? People to think that they can uh, they can rise up against them. And he's and he's a classic dictator. It has nothing to do with like this almost like Batman level fear of a Super Saiyan that beat up his ancestor. That has nothing to do with it. And that's what this tries to convince you of. Yeah. Um, the the basic premise behind this is that Bardock was the first Super Saiyan. And that it was because of Lord Chill getting his ass kicked by Bardock that Frieza and the rest of his race resist the idea of a Super Saiyan, which, you know, is something that we brought up in Lord Chill. It's, it's really just a fact of there is a legend that these lower these lower beings, because this race views the Saiyans and everybody else for that matter as below them, could actually become more powerful than them. And it, it's just so... Um, damaging to their sort of reputation, you know? Right, exactly. Because these Saiyans are... I mean, if you look at the history of them, they're really... They don't really become anything until the era of King Vegeta and Bardock and Goku and, and Vegeta Jr. You know, it's all... Um, you know, they're all low-class warriors, and it, it, it's not until you get to the... until you get to Goku. Goku was kind of the savior of his race's reputation. Mm -hmm. He gave the, the Saiyan name some moxie, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Because before that, Saiyans were a fucking joke. You know, they were monkeys. Yeah. And Goku was the one, because he turned Super Saiyan, because a Saiyan took down Frieza, and Bardock even to a certain extent did this, that gave the Saiyan name some fear. Because a Super Saiyan was born who killed Frieza. Um, so... <sighs> It just – it's really kind – it really kind of ruins the power of the Frieza saga to have Bardock go Super Saiyan this early in the DBZ universe. Right, and, and they, they kind of mess up the, um, the continuity in another way. At the end, Lord Shield doesn't say, tell my family to beware a Super Saiyan. He tells them to beware a Saiyan because the word Super Saiyan never comes up in the, his conversation with Bardock. So he just right. sort of assumes that all Saiyans are like this. Well, he calls it a blonde-haired Saiyan, and I'm just like, oh, God. Just just say gold. Blonde sounds so stupid. Exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a blonde-haired guy, but it's like that name does not sound threatening. Just say gold. Golden hair sounds threatening. Um, the other biggest problem with this is Bardock's characterization. He comes off way too much like Batman in this. Yeah, and then there's that little kid that sort of forms an attachment to him very much like the attachment between Trunks and Tapion in Wrath yes. of the Dragon, so much to the point where they're even ripping that movie off with the kid bringing him food and what have you. Oh, yeah, it, that's explicitly in there. Um, Bardock, Bardock is not the guy who's going to pal around with a kid and then save this race from chill. Mm -hmm. they, they try to insinuate that the only reason, or like one of the biggest reasons why he's even bothering to fight chill is that um, he looks like Frieza. Right. That's the thing. Um, so it's like, but I'm just like, Bardock would, because Bardock didn't turn into a good guy at the end of Bardock, Father of Goku. Right. He redeemed himself only because he care, He started to care about people and about his race. He didn't turn into, into a hero by any stretch of the imagination. And they, in this, they try to turn him into, they kind of try to turn him into Vegeta. Yeah, to a certain extent. Um, um, in that, you know, uh, I don't know. It just, it's, it's a weird thing. I can't believe it even got fucking made. Um, 
Yeah. Um, aside from his name being incredibly stupid, what did you think of the villain in this, uh, Lord Chilled? Um, he had some cool dialogue. Um, I'm not going to lie. Um, he had some really cool dialogue in this. I like all the things he says to Bardock. I like how smooth he comes off. Like, Frieza... Frieza always carried himself like a dictator and not a very sharp-tongued one. Mm -hmm. well, Chill's not a dictator. Yeah. He's a pirate. Yeah, that's what he's so, – yet another pirate in DBZ, yet another space pirate. Um, yeah, yeah, I just assumed that at this point in the timeline, Frieza's race hadn't become the sort of uh, dictators that they were um, in Goku's day. Right, which is funny because the name of their race is still Tyrant. Um, right. <laughs> it's so weird. Uh, I, you got to wonder what conceited motherfucker of their race decided to name themselves that. Um, I, I wonder, is that their legit name or is that just what yeah. the, everyone in the universe started calling them after they – No, no, no. That's their legit race name. Hmm. Interesting. I, as far – I mean we don't have anything else. I mean that's just their classification. Um, it's Tyrant. Maybe, maybe they did just call themselves that after Frieza's family took over the universe, but – there's no other name to call them by, so... Yeah, we get very little information about that race. That's, that's always something that I've wanted to know more about. Um, yeah, totally. I mean, A, do they have to fuck? I mean... I don't know. They, because they don't... They all seem very effeminate. That, and they, they don't appear to have any um, equipment. <laughs> well, here's the thing about that. Frieza is wearing armor. Until he transforms. But... Final Still, form okay, Frieza doesn't right. have any armor. What? Final form Frieza doesn't have any armor. Right, but well, yeah, but I mean, maybe it all just gets tucked away like a shark. Well, I, I guess I kind of sort of look at that race as being reptilian, just because of the tail. There's really not much else about them that screams reptile, but you know, it's the tail. I just latch onto that. So if yeah. if they're reptilian, they don't really need to have any um extremities <laughs> yeah i mean the other thing is that um i've heard from dbz fans who know more about the, the extended universe that they are um asexual which I, I i think that that kind of explains freeze's characterization in dbz because of how like i mean we both had this when we were kids we thought that freeze was a chick um well uh, but again you know then you look at king cold and cooler and this is something i brought up in the revenge of cooler uh, review they are clearly male definitely male i mean cooler cooler i mean yes definitely they are definitely male it's really bizarre Especially um, the american dub don't listen to cooler's japanese voice yeah, don't listen to any of the Japanese voices. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's just go on a little rant here. I despise the Japanese cast. <laughs> I, and I'm sorry, they, they they started it all and shit, but I mean, I don't like the guy who plays Goku. I mean, p people in Japan, if you're listening to this right now, which I, I think there is zero chance of that actually happening, but... If, well, I actually have a couple Japanese subscribers. So if there are any Japanese listening to this right now, um, no offense, uh, just... <laughs> Call me a dumb American if you need to, but I, I, I just I can I can barely get through listen, hearing the Japanese cast, and I had to for tonight because of this, this stuff only being in Japan, not for this, just because it was a uh, fan dub. Fan dubbed. Um, yeah. I, but my main what problem. A, what an annoying voice. Goku was the one. Goku and Gohan are the ones that really bother me. Yeah. Everyone else is just kind of bleh. They're way too high pitched. Yeah, I, I really, I, I really do like the guy that does Vegeta in the Japanese version. Um, he's fine. Um, Piccolo is a little bit too soft spoken. Hmm. Um, and maybe this is just because we're used to the Funimation cast. But Master Roshi, uh, yeah, I'm not. Master Roshi sounds so much older in Japanese. A lot of see, they only the the, the Japanese, and again, this is going to sound really racist, but I, I, I'm not. I don't mean it to. The ja Japanese voice actors only seem to have two vocal ranges for males. Young kid and old fucking man. Right, right. And that's what we saw in this. Vegeta sounds old. I mean, he's talking like this. And Piccolo sounds like Goku and that he has a high-pitched voice. I'm just like, this doesn't work. Um, yeah. It's just, it, as, as American fans, it's just... Um, I don't know. I prefer. I definitely would rather listen to the Funimation cast. Um, yeah, or even the Ocean Dub, depending on what I'm watching. Um, 
not the brilliant scientist thing. <laughs> not the brilliant scientist thing. Um, the... <laughs> that, that might be the worst moment ever in Dragon Ball Z history. Just that sheer fucked up continuity bit. Um, the first two movies are what I watch Ocean Dub. Um, right, yeah, same here. And everything else, I prefer the Funimation cast because Bardock was a brilliant scientist. Um, <laughs> if you watch this movie... He's not a brilliant scientist. <laughs> um, he doesn't get to go back in time because he's a brilliant scientist. He gets to go back in time because for the convenience of the plot. Um, to be to be fair, Bardock being a brilliant scientist probably makes about as much sense as all the plot points in this movie. Um, yes. Um, but we were kind of going off on his characterization. He's way too. He's just way too heroic. Um, he he turns way too quickly from an antihero into just a straight up hero. Right. Um, now, since we've pretty much been criticizing it the entire time, um, if I can just go ahead and say this, I don't hate it, and I'm not going to say skip it just because I think there is it, – it is entertaining enough. Yeah, I agree. To where if you're a – if you are a fan of DBZ, you know, yeah, give it a watch, and, and the fan dub that we watched is pretty good. You're going to – you're going to get – if you're a Dragon Ball Z fan, you're going to get curious and given to your curiosity. It's – it's it's worth watching just for the sheer novelty of Bardock going Super Saiyan. It's just cool that they fucking made it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, and I do, again, the animation is really good. Yeah, and from an animation standpoint, it's gorgeous. Um, but the story is a mess. Um, the continuity is a, is a mess. Uh, Bardock's characterization is a mess. The fighting is not that great. It's just kind of a disappointment. But it is... It is mildly entertaining. If if you if you're a completionist and you've seen all of Dragon Ball Z, why not? Um, it you gotta kind of watch it. Dylan said this best. You gotta kind of watch it like bad fan fiction. Um, and that sounds weird, but you just kind of you have to look at it through that lens. Don't be too hard on it, or it's gonna fall apart. Um, you just kind of kind of let it sit back and let the stupid goofiness take over you. And just kind of enjoy the novelty of Bardock going Super Saiyan, and finding out some of some of the decent things about um, Planet Vegeta's background, mm -hmm. um, like the water that Dylan mentioned. Um, uh, and again, the first time I saw this, I expected it to be really bad, and it was bad, but it surprised me with how good it was considering my expectations. Go into it with your expectations below the floor, and you might like it. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. That's that's what we'll say. That, that's probably um, the best way to put it. Um, so I guess we should probably move on. Mm -hmm. Which one came next after that? Uh, well, I'm not sure what order all of these came in, so I'm just doing a in this order. Uh, I did episode of Bardock, so now I'm going to move on to uh, plan to eradicate all Super Saiyans, and this one. This one technically was released in America just because it's an unlockable on the video game Dragon Ball Z uh, Raging Blast, but with some of the worst subtitles ever put ever released in America. Yeah, because it's not dubbed; it is subbed. So I, I still put it in this seg uh, segment. And uh, Bill, you were um, kind of giving me a history lesson about this the other night. It, 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 apparently, there's two versions of this, or there are two versions of this. One of which is even worse. Um, this is actually a little bit better than the other version, only because this is at least mildly more entertaining. Mm. Okay, so there's a lost episode of Dragon Ball Z, or a lost movie, I don't know how, exactly how the classification is, and you can see it. It's on, um, uh, I think it's dbz.tv.com, I think is the URL. You can find it online. It's essentially the same plot. The Tuffles created this gas that they launched to Earth, which is supposed to take revenge on the Saiyans. The difference with the, the original is that, because in the, in the movie, it actually kind of does the same thing, but they go about it differently. In the one that we, we're going to review, it's called Grudge. Everything in, this, everything in this little thing is based around revenge. Yes. And um, it's this gas called, uh, I think, what's it called? Uh, Destron um, gas. Destron gas. But it's comprised of this stuff called Grudge. And it brings back a couple of the movie and TV villains. Um, it it kind of reanimates them and uh, allows them to take revenge on Goku and the, other, and the other Z fighters. That's essentially the premise. The original was not like that. It's the same premise. These pods get launched, there's gas. But what it does is it clearly disables their key powers, so like they can't use the Kamehameha. But somehow they can still go Super Saiyan, which makes no sense. Um, no. 
and uh, they they I, I didn't watch the full thing because it was so bad. Um, but it's very clear why it never got released because it's fucking terrible. Um, and then this is the remake of it, uh, and it's a little bit more entertaining because there's a lot more fighting in it. Because it's just Goku and the Z Fighters fighting these pods, based on what I saw of the original, and it's mm-hmm. just um, you know, it's 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 not fun to see these characters get weakened just for the sake of poor drama, um, or a poor attempt at drama, and it is a poor attempt at drama. Now this um, um this creature that they fight at the end of the movie, uh, Hatchiak is its name. Is it in the original version? Uh, I don't believe so. I, to be fair, I never got that far. I knew what I watched like 15 minutes of it, and again, I was so blown away by how bad it was. I just turned it off. Um, mm-hmm. But it is the same premise. It's about the Tuffles trying to get revenge on the Sands. Uh, you know, gas, all that crap. Um, here's the thing. These neither of these two, neither of these two, original or the re, or the redone version, had to be longer than 10 minutes. No, not really. The one we watched was way too long. I was painfully bored by it. Yeah, it, it is a it is a tad boring. Um, un- um, until the ending. The ending fight is pretty decent, and it, 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 it's it's a, de- it's a very typical Dragon Ball Z fight, but it's it's better than the one that's in Bardock. Yeah, and it'll hold your interest. Um, it's probably my favorite part of the movie. The anim- yeah, oh, sure, yeah. The animation in this is pretty good. I, I have this feeling that um. I praised the the animation in both Cooler's Revenge and uh, Fusion Reborn for being for looking very polished. This this almost looks a little too polished to me, and and it gets yeah it gets worse with the uh, next thing that we're going to review. But but it does come off that way. Um, I don't I don't feel like I'm watching DBZ just because the animation is kind of off. Yeah, it doesn't feel like yeah I agree. It doesn't feel like you're watching Dragon Ball Z. You feel like you're watching a modern anime. And that's not to say that the animation can't be this polished. It just has to be a little grittier. The colors are way too bright, and it's way too high definition. Mm, yeah. Um, but overall, this special, the premise is actually really good. Um, it's It was kind of also done... It's a little bit of the same idea with the Baby Saga in, in Dragon Ball GT. And I don't know which one is worse, but you be the judge. I, I, think, I, I think at least in overall execution i kind of enjoyed the baby saga more because at least at least baby's a cool villain um but it's basically the same thing the tuffles want revenge on the saiyans and they create this artificial being to do it um so that's that's a decent premise hello uh but uh so yeah, this this special it's um <laughs> Dylan has left me alone, so I have to fill out this this these next couple minutes. Okay, so I'll talk out of my ass. I can do that. Um, okay, so this special, I found it really boring, and here's why: the fights are very typical Dragon Ball Z fights, and there's way too much of an emphasis on the energy attacks. Now. I talked about early on how in the pre-Super Saiyan stuff, like like Lord Slug and Dead Zone and World's Strongest, that some of the fights can be a little boring, especially in Dead Zone, some of the fights can be a little boring because all they're doing is typical martial arts moves, which is, which is, you know, which can be fun, but you need a balance with the energy attacks to make it really entertaining and fast paced. And they hit that stride when they got to stuff like Cool Wars Revenge and Broly the Legendary Super Saiyan and um, Return of Cooler and Fusion Reborn and all those other movies, this one is way too reliant on the energy attacks. It's all energy blasts and Kamehamehas. Vegeta uses Final Flash at least five times, which is ridiculous. It's called Final Flash for a fucking reason. Um, And there's just way too much of an emphasis on the energy attacks, and the stuff that DBZ started out as, the really cool martial arts moves, are not present at all. Uh, It's really, it's really kind of, uh, it's kind of disappointing. And it makes the fights less less interesting, because it's just, it's a bunch of energy balls getting thrown. Um, Yeah, um, 
I, I agree. And um, I'm back. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> Get all the way to episode seven, and I'm, now I'm having technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Um, but yeah, uh, I was just t- I was just telling the people uh, that my biggest problem with the action in this movie is that they're way too reliant on the energy attacks. And I, I, it makes the fighting less entertaining, I think, because it's like it's all Kamehameha's. And the, probably the most hilarious one, Vegeta uses Final Flash it used at least five times, and it's called Final Flash for a fucking reason. And he's, like, obsessed with it for some reason when it doesn't work. It's like it's the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> the expression on his face, he's like, my, my Final Flash. It, 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 it didn't work. <laughs> yeah, there's a line that's basically like that where he goes, my technique. Oh, um, it's like, yeah, Vegeta, it just, what is wrong with you? <laughs> I, yeah. Um, also, my other problem with this in that same vein is that I, I don't like how in later DBZ they downplay the strength of the Super Saiyans. And this is really bad at that. These They go Super Saiyan as soon as they get to the fight and never turn it off. Mm, and obviously this is supposed to be like taking place after Cell. Um, yeah. Why doesn't Gohan just go Super Saiyan too? Well, I, I wouldn't say after Cell because uh, look at look at the design of Teen Trunks. He's got the short hair. So when do you think it is? Like, you know what? I I don't know because because you're right. Teen Gohan looks like after he got out of the hyperbolic time chamber. Yeah, I mean, again, this is a DBZ movie, so continuity is all over the place. But yeah. It's weird to pick out the era because they're picking from different points. Um, it's really kind of weird. Goku's alive. It's it's kind of weird. It's it's essentially the Cell Saga in general, not before, not after, not even during. Um, it's just the era of the Cell Saga. And part of um, part of the reason why all of these things from Japan have these weird little things where they feel kind of disjointed from everything that came before, you know? The TV specials and the other movies that we reviewed were made alongside the show. They, these things were made years after, so it's like they're kind of detached in that way. Yeah, exactly. Which is weird because the reason why the movie's continuity is, continuities are so fucked is because they, A, didn't know what the show was going to do next, mm-hmm. and B... The show has such a moment by moment type continuity that it's very hard to have things happen in between. Right. The, um, the continuity of the show is very tight for the most part, um, with a few right. little exceptions. Exactly. There, there are things where there are gaps that leave room for stuff to happen. Cool Wars Revenge being one of them because it can kind of take place in between the three years before the Cell games. Um, Pretty much all the stuff after after the Boo Saga is open game, especially if you ignore GT. Um, right, Fusion Reborn. I, I mean, not Fusion Reborn. Uh, Wrath of the Wrath of the Dragon really has nothing because it's like you know that takes place clearly after the Boo Saga. Fusion Reborn is confusing because both Goku and Vegeta are dead, yet Go- Goku directly references Majin Buu. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, I really did not like this one at all. Um, my my biggest problem with it was that the sub- – and this is just the way I watched it. The subtitles were terrible. They were so fucking tiny. And they're over in the corner where you can – And they're see. over in the corner. Yeah. Yeah. There's a reason why a lot of subtitle movies use yellow subtitles, and this movie displays why. It is almost illegible because the type, the font is so small, so skinny, and it's white. You have to like really squint to read out what it says, and by the time you get to it, you're like, shit, next dialogue scene. Fuck. And there's also a reason that most subtitled movies put the um, the subtitles in the middle of the screen, you know, centered, because having them off to the side, you, you have to sort of turn your head to read them, and it, it's very distracting. You can't read it and watch it at the same time. You know, yep. which, which is one of the reasons why I think it, it comes off as so, being so boring until you get to the fight sequences where there is hardly any dialogue to have to read. Exactly. Um, the story in this, aside from the initial premise, which is fairly strong, I feel like the execution is kind of bland because it's like, Bulma, we have a problem. Yes, there's this gas killing the Earth. Okay, I shall fix it. You guys go beat up the bad guys, and we will we will win. <laughs> Here, I have found an antidote to the gas. Yay. Yay! Shoot it, Bulma. Whee! 
Good. Now let us kill the bad guy. Yeah, that, that whole gas thing is wrapped up so quickly. It would have been better if they just did the ghosts of the uh, the villains. Yeah, the gas is really weird because it really serves no purpose. Because okay, here's where here's where I'm confused. So the Tuffles want revenge on the Saiyans, right? Mm-hmm. Yet Bulma says they're the only ones immune to the gas. Well, what we learn later on is that um, it deprives them of their key. So I think the idea was that it would just make them powerless so that the uh, the ghosts could kill them. Um whereas the humans are just sort of casualties. Yeah, but it's like I don't know, it seemed because they they shoot the thing all over, they shoot these pods all over the place. Yet the all the Saiyans on Earth are concentrated in one city. Right. Why wouldn't they just fire one giant one there and just let it happen? Why the whole Earth? I guess they wanted to gas the whole planet so that the Saiyans couldn't just leave the city. Yeah, but they're they're not going to anyway because they're going to be fighting the ghosts. Good point. I'm just... <laughs> uh, the, the the science is not sound. Um, the science is not sound. Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Lai Chi, who is apparently supposed to be the most powerful Tuffle scientist, his science is not sound. <laughs> his science is really not sound. I don't know what the fuck the grudge is supposed to be. Um, it ain't no little ghost Japanese girl. Um, <laughs> no, it's not. Um, I really don't understand like where it comes from, what it does, how he creates it, um, how he's able to get the ghosts of Frieza, Cooler, Turles, Lord Slug. Oh, that um, was one thing I wanted to say. Um Maybe it's just because we've been talking about these movies all week. Um, it, it was nice to see all of them on screen. <laughs> yeah. Why? Here's the thing. All the dialogue that these villains spurred out is against Saiyans. And guess what Turles is? Um, a Saiyan. Yeah, yeah. He has a... Why the fuck is he, he – why, why the fuck does he get used? I mean, I get it. He has a grudge against Goku, but he's a fucking Saiyan. Right, right. I <laughs> Honestly, I wish they didn't put Frieza in there just because I would have liked to see all movie villains for this. Um, yeah, instead of Turles, put in Garlic Jr. Or, well, he's locked up in a black hole. He's not dead. Or Bro oh, oh, Broly's a Saiyan. Um, um, you could use An Jamemba. Android 13. Jamemba, Android 13. You could have thrown in um, or, 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 uh, uh, Bojack. Bojack could have been in it. Um, there's a bunch you could have used. You could have used, uh... I would have, I would have replaced Turles with Bojack, because the whole point of Turles was that he was, he was the one that was sort of fighting Gohan, which is, you know, clever just because he was picking on Gohan in that movie. But yeah, the, it would have been better if they replaced him with Bojack. Also, why does Gohan have to go Super Saiyan to kill Turles? I mean, that's a normal state Saiyan you're dealing with, kid. You don't have to go Super Saiyan to beat him. He's just, he's just kind of a normal Saiyan. You should just be able to fire one Kamehameha and he'll be dead. Yeah. I mean, this is one of the things we praised Fusion Reborn for. The continuity of the power levels was kept consistent because Gohan was able to kill Frieza in one punch. Yeah, yeah. The, the this movie, um, f uh, they just seem to prefer fighting as Super Saiyans because that's the only state they use. It's like, yeah, we could fight with black hair, but but why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like there's a difference between being smart and getting the fight over quickly and conserving your power. The, Goku says it constantly in the show. Those transformations require a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. And they do it so casually in a lot of the later DBZ stuff, it pisses me off because it, it makes it less cool. Because after they transform, really, when they're in the Super Saiyan state, they are burning through energy really quickly. Like That's why. You that's what that energy, yeah, that's what that aura around them means. It's, it, that's why it looks like fire is because it's, it's burning off energy. They're, they're producing so much of it, they're giving it off in a state where you can see it. Mm -hmm. I always wish that they had done, done something with uh, the Super Saiyans, the Super Saiyan transformation, similar to uh, what they had with the Kaioken, where you can't stay in it too long. Um, I think I think that would have added more to that concept, and then these later movies wouldn't be able to do that. <laughs> well, I like well, it's all based on emotion, so I like that as long as you're fighting, you can stay in it. But I like how usually in, in the early stuff is uh, anyway. Whenever Goku's done fighting, he always just kind of falls out of it naturally. Like uh, when when he fights Frieza for the first time, the minute he kind of stops fighting Frieza, he goes back to normal state. Right. Right. You may have addressed this when I was um, gone, um, but uh, what do you think of the, the thing that they fight at the end of this movie? At the end of this movie, the machine that the evil Tuffle scientist is using to uh, 
produce the ghosts, absorbs his grudge energy, whatever that means, and transforms into this thing called uh, Hatchayak. Hatchayak, Hatchayak, whatever. Whatever it is, yeah. Um, and it's a, it's a, it's a neat-looking villain, I suppose. Yeah. Um, it has the same weakness as Harutagarn. Yeah, it's weak. But, I mean, I like how they kind of made it specific where you have to wait 15 seconds before you can hit it. That was kind of neat. Yeah, the, um, the most clever thing about this entire thing is is that ending where Goku figures out – because it kind of goes back to um, how in battle he's a ta- uh, tactical genius. Goku figures out that it takes exactly 15 seconds for him to charge up, and so then they all get together and, like, count up to it, and then they all fire their beam attacks at him, and that ending – I'm going to say that ending is probably worth the, worth the price of admission. Just watch that. I mean, yeah, and this, this is such a nitpick. The only thing that pisses me off about it is that they fuck up Piccolo's special beam cannon. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't come out yellow. It comes out blue, which the only reason they do it is that way it blends in with the Kamehameha and the final flash. But I'm like, no, Piccolo's special beam cannon is special um, exactly it's, it's yellow and he doesn't call it a special beam cannon is that just a japanese thing he calls it something else yeah but it's clearly supposed to be the special beam cannon um yeah i mean i'm just saying is is it called something different in the japanese version of the show i um you know what i actually think it is okay so that explains that i was like wait no that's not what that's called <laughs> um when i was a kid i used to call it the special beam cannon special beam cannon <laughs> and all my friends were like my friends kind of believed in me like they accepted that as fact because I never stopped saying it but we always joked like it doesn't really make any sense it has nothing to do with beans but <laughs> shows you how stupid we were as kids because it's not, we just, because it's not a bean cannon um, Bill <laughs> I, I started this bullshit and they all bought it but still ex- but it's like it's weird because they believed me but they still questioned it without questioning me if that makes any sense Okay. Like, okay, so they, it's like, okay, so they believe what I was saying is true. They questioned the creators of the show for making that conscious choice, though, even though they didn't. That always cracked me up. Um, right. I don't know, it's weird. Um, anyway, uh, didn't really like this. Um, no, the, 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 I like the ending, <laughs> pretty much. The ending's okay. My biggest problem with it is that the fighting is not that well balanced it's all, it's all energy attacks and yeah. the martial arts moves are not that good um this is the pretty much the polar opposite of dead zone in the dead zone review i talked about how i liked the fact that they don't use as many energy attacks and they they uh, use a lot more of the martial arts and then it's more balanced in uh, world's strongest um yeah totally and then but in this, and in the later dbz stuff but in this it's like okay Nothing but energy attacks. It's completely long range, and that's a problem that the show has in the later seasons, but never really to this extent. No, not at all. Um, yeah, it's just not a very energy. It's really boring. Um, there's also a line where Goku says that this thing is more powerful than Broly, and I call bullshit. <laughs> Wait, did he say that? There's a line where Goku is like, "This thing might even be more powerful than Broly." <laughs> no way. Broly fought all of the people that are in that room and beat all of them. Right, right. And this thing can't even – because it's like – at least like, – Broly took them down. And then, Goku had to take all their energy and use it to, like, get, give them one big sucker punch, and that beat them. This thing doesn't even take them down at all. They just keep going. And then uh, King Kai has a line where he's like, this could mean the end of the North Galaxy, and I'm like – this thing was designed to kill all the Saiyans. Once the, once the Saiyans are done, it's probably just going to shut off because it is a machine. <laughs> like, yeah, it's not it's not a conscience being with any – I mean it's, it's designed to kill the Saiyans for revenge, and that's it. They talk about how the Earth is going to get destroyed, but, they, but they're just like that's just because you guys happen to be on it. Yeah, it's like we don't care about the Earth. We're here to kill the Saiyans. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just – it's. I found it very boring. Um, I don't really recommend it. I think that it's it's not something that you really need to check out. Um, the concept of having a, a a villain that is specifically targeting the Saiyans is a neat concept. Yes, it is. It's a concept that you could do more with. They did more with it in GT, and it pains me to say that GT did anything better than anybody else. Yeah, it. But it, it really did though, because at least Baby has a better personality than this thing. Yeah. Yeah. 
Also, Baby's dialogue against the Saiyans is it's it's a lot more well written because oh, yeah. here's the he, thing: so Baby had a fucking point. He's so passionate about it. I mean, like there, I've never seen a Dragon Ball Z villain or a Dragon Ball villain more generally who actually had a point. Like he's kind of right. Right. The Tuffles are the only DBZ villains who are like, yeah, the Saiyans wiped them out. They have every reason to want Goku and his and Vegeta dead. Mm -hmm. And they're, you know, they had a point. They 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 were had a totally valid point, and that's what made Baby interesting. Again, it's not it's not it's only a little bit better executed than this is because at least Baby is a cool villain and some of the writing is good, but um yeah, I I wish more, Yeah, at least it's more entertaining than this. All the tuffles have is this and GT, and then they're mentioned in Z sometimes. I, I wish the Tuffles had a better had a better um, moment on screen than this because they they do have interesting motivations, and it is a nice concept. You have an entire race that hates the Saiyans just for being Saiyans, and you can do so much with that. And they've never executed it to its full effect. No, not at all. Um, and you definitely could. I think it's a great idea. Um, but yeah, all. And again, all... It's, it's... All of this, it's, all that yeah. this has going for it is that that final beam battle is kind of cool, and it's 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 neat to see all these movie villains on screen, especially if you've spent a whole week talking about them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that was something cool to see, like Lord Slug and fucking Cooler. Um, I just um, I don't know. I wasn't sold on it. I found it very boring. Uh, I don't really, I don't recommend it really. Um, I wouldn't recommend it either. Uh, Skip it. Um, um, yeah, I say skip it. It's um, unless you're a com unless you're a completionist. I always have to throw that out there because I am, and that's the only reason I subject myself to these things. Um, <laughs> this is Dylan's kind of a masochist in that way. Um, it's like I must see everything DBZ. Um, huh, Dylan, it's really bad. I don't care. See, Dylan, now you have to watch that lost episode. Oh yeah, because it's. I didn't know that it was a different version. It's totally different. It, again, it sucks, but it does exist. Damn it. Um, Damn it. Okay. We're getting up early tomorrow. Don't wave me off. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, that was really random. Um, what was I? What was I in the middle of saying? I don't know now. Hold on. Um. Oh yeah, I, I didn't know that that was a completely different version. So, and I'm I'm just gonna have to suck it up and watch it. <laughs> it's really bad. Um, probably probably with alcohol. <laughs> get through it with whiskey. <laughs> um, How I got through evolution. Um, oh yeah, that too. Um, anyway, so so I, on to the next one. I, I guess we can now move on to. Oh boy, Yo Sung, <laughs> Yo Sung Goku and his friends return, or the stupidest name ever. Or yeah, they might as well have just called it "We're Back, Bitches." <laughs> oh, that would have been so much cooler. It would have. I would actually like this movie if that's what they called it. Freaking <laughs> Dragon Ball Z, we're back, bitches. <laughs> I, I also like to call it Yo Sung Goku and his friends have a pointless misadventure that really doesn't have any effect on anything. Um, this is shit absolute shit the first thing i want to say is about the animation i thought plan to eradicate all super saiyans is too polished <laughs> oh boy this looks <laughs> like the cinematics from one of the video games <laughs> yeah the animation is way too clean it, looking it looks like um it looks like something you'd see in like a kid's coloring book yeah, like yeah, I, I, it's I just so clean, and I don't like that about it. Right, there's a level of cleanness that I like with my DBZ animation, uh, but nothing much better than Fusion Reborn. <laughs> right, exactly. This is way too clean. Um, uh, okay, where the fuck do we start? The plot is embarrassingly bad. Okay, this is basically a reunion special, just to throw that That's out there. That's essentially what it is, and not a very so good reunion special. <laughs> no, it's terrible. Um, okay, so this is after the Boo Saga, and there's this big dinner at uh, Hercule's house. 
Uh, all every single major um, DBZ character and some obscure ones pop up. Yeah, there's They're like all there's like one second of film where Launch is in this. It's like oh, yep. even threw in Launch. Um, I, just to throw this out there, um, it's not Hercules' house. He built a hotel. Uh, oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Yeah, he built this hotel with this really stupid name that is in commemoration of the defeat of Boo because the entire planet thinks he beat Boo. Now the other thing is. Boo is at the party. <laughs> um, yeah, because well, it's it's good Boo and him and Hercule are of course all buddy buddy. Um, yeah, but it's it's hilarious that it's in the celebration of the defeat of Boo, and there's a Boo there. And there's this really terrible scene where it kind of implies that him and Boo are gay lovers. <laughs> yep, that that's in there. Because um, they they walk by camera. Videl's on the phone with uh, Gohan, and you just see them walk by in the background, both in, in like bathrobes. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to they're going to the steam room. They're gonna sit on each other's laps. Um. Uh. Okay. So they're all there. Goku's there. Vegeta's there. Bulma's there. Everyone's there. For some reason, Vegeta is wearing his armor. Um. Here's why it pisses me off. He's so Goku's because Goku brings this up directly. He's like Vegeta. You look like you're dressed for battle. And he's like, uh, this is saying uh, casual wear, Kakarot. I'm like, bullshit. Right. Why are you wearing the armor plate? Right, right, yeah. There is no reason to wear the armor plate or the gloves. You're going to be eating. Yeah, he's dressed like he's dressed like um, Cell Saga, um, Vegeta. I, I wouldn't have minded if, if he was dressed like Majin Buu Saga, uh, Saga Vegeta, where he just had the blue thing and the gloves and the boots. Right. I wouldn't mind that at all. Yeah, well... Even then, dude, put on a fucking shirt. I mean, just – we've seen Vegeta in normal people clothes before. Why doesn't he just throw those on? I don't know, man. I don't know. You just pop on a leather jacket and, and a t-shirt and just go to the fucking party, you fucking square. Um, here's the thing. The concept of seeing what Saiyans would wear casually, that's kind of neat, but they don't fucking do anything with it. He's wearing the same clothes he is in the Cell Saga. Yeah, and Goku shows up in his his outfit too. Which he he does that anyway, so I'm fine with that. He shows up everywhere wearing that thing. Um But uh okay, so where else to to go? All right, second biggest problem with this. Okay. So the basic premise is that Vegeta's lost brother Tarble Terrible. Pops up at this party with his wife. Terrible name. Terrible name. Terrible wife. Um, <laughs> it's a floating ball. No, she has legs. Oh, whatever. How the hell does he have sex with that thing? I do not know. Also, he is way too young to be Vegeta's brother, despite him being younger. Yeah, he, yeah. He looks like he's a teenager. Yep, and... Vegeta is at least forty he's like, in this. He is he is um what's the word I'm looking for? He's Teen Gohan sized. Yeah, and this is after the Boo saga. Vegeta and Goku are at least well Goku's been dead, but even that if you're gonna if you're gonna count those dead years as birth years, they're at almost forty. Gotta be, right? Brings up an interesting question. Do, do they count those? Like, what what do, what do they do when it comes to birthdays? It's like, okay. Well, because he doesn't age, but is he, he, I mean, he was, like, he was conscious, I mean. Right. I don't know. But, um. I don't, I don't know, man. I just don't know about this. Um, it, it raises too many questions. <laughs> um. Yeah, uh, so he looks t so he shows up and is like, "Hey, Vegeta," and Vegeta's really casual about the fact that he hasn't seen this kid in at least twenty years, and he, well, the whole, and he's just like the whole idea is that this kid was like a disgrace to the Saiyan race because he couldn't fight, and so his dad like marooned him on some nothing planet. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just like, if you're seeing your brother, no matter the problems you had in like twenty years, and he somehow knows what planet you're on, yeah. I have a little bit more of a reaction than hi. He's just like, hi. Yeah, he's just, Tarble's like, hi. He just basically says, Tarble, what are you doing here? And then Tarble mentions the fact that they're brothers, and the rest of the Z fighters are like, what? Well, I mean, the other thing is that they do close-ups on all the things that identifies him as a Saiyan. He has the armor, he has the tail, he has the scouter. Um, right. I, I do like... I, the only thing I like about this is... And I, I even have a problem with this. So... 
he looks Tarble looks at Goku, realizes that he's the one who kills Frieza, and measures his power level, and it's not that impressive. Mm-hmm. Vegeta tears it off Tarble and says, "Don't ever use that thing again. It's useless." No, he doesn't. Cap- he doesn't tear. He doesn't tear it off. Goku demonstrates the Super Saiyan transformation, and the Scouter does that thing that it always used to do, where it like explodes on his face. Oh, right, and that somehow doesn't kill him. Um, well, it, okay, it, here's it, my it, biggest problem with that. It never did. Okay. <laughs> what? To be fair, it never did kill them on, in the show whenever one of their scouters would explode. I know, I know, but it's like that glass flying everywhere. That should go right in his face. Um, here's the thing. My biggest problem with that scene is that he looks at Goku and says, oh my god, his power level is almost non-existent, and I'm just like, Okay, no. Even if Goku is in normal state and not charged up, his power level is still going to be pretty sizable. He's got huge muscles, and he carries himself like a fighter. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, even if he's in normal state, not Super Saiyan, not in the fight, not charging up, he's still going to give off a sizable power level. And Tarbell's like, he's he's like the lowest Saiyan I've ever measured. I'm just like, and he doesn't... Like, Goku doesn't just get powerful because he goes Super Saiyan. He has a, a, a powerful normal state. Um, I don't know, that pissed me the fuck off. Yeah, because um, I'm not exactly sure what Goku's base power level is when he's not, when he's not like, just walking around every day. I do. But, but you do. <laughs> but the thing is... It's over 9,000! Well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like... Had to it, I'm sorry. It's like, they've established that these... That the um that they can actively like hide their power levels if they want to, but he would not be doing that just at a party, you know, huh. sitting around unless he just sort of like instinctively did it whenever they felt that there was something on its way there. Yeah, which will bring us to the villains. What a fucking joke. Yes, um, there are these two villains that apparently used to be some of Frieza's henchmen, and apparently at the time they were as powerful as the Ginyu Force. <laughs> Bullshit. Um, and and <laughs> well. and now they are each as powerful as Frieza himself was. <laughs> Bullshit. Um, and their names. Where the fuck were they? Where the, where the fuck were they when, C- when Frieza was dead? I mean. And their names are, Abo and Kado. And they can fuse into a big purple monster whose name is, you guessed it, kids, Avocado. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, it's that kind of it's that kind of DBZ special. It's that kind of bullshit. Yeah. Um so Goku and Vegeta every basically everyone wants to try and fight this thing. I don't know why. They they basically see it as sport because Frieza is nothing compared to them now because they've been through so many different kinds of enemies now. And it's so hilarious because Tarbell is so afraid of these things and then Goku has this line where he's like, Oh, they're as powerful as Frieza. Well in hindsight he wasn't that bad of a foe. So they're perfect for the kids. Yep, and then Goten and Trunks are the ones who fight them. What a disappointment. Um, <laughs> um, and the reason all the Z fighters want to fight them, and I mean everybody, even Master Roshi is throwing his head into the ring, which is stupid. <laughs> like he hasn't made a quick move in like at least thirty years, and he wants to fight them. I love it. <laughs> but, but um, they all just want to fight. Imagine if Roshi just like he does that muscle thing like he did in Broly. They all want to fight because it's been like two or three years since Boo at this point, and they they all just want to fight. That that's basically the thing. They they're all out of practice. <laughs> right. And I get Goku and Vegeta wanting to do it, but I, and I like that. I like it when they're when they're about to fight over it. I, I thought that was that was definitely in character. Um, and I do like how they both like jump in front of each other, go Super Saiyan. And Chi Chi and Bulma have to break them up. I like I like that moment. Yeah, that, that's a really good moment. The, the rivalry between Goku and Vegeta, even though it wasn't this strong by the end of the Boo saga, but whatever, um, is well is at least very... this is a friendly rivalry. I mean, it's well at least done. It's not like Cell Saga Vegeta where he's like, I'm just gonna save you because I'm the one who wants to kill you. Yeah, that's true. It is more of like it, Goku will piss him off, and he's just like, Goku, you asshole. Or Kak- exactly. Or, that's how it is. Um, or Kakarot, because at the end of the movie, there's this scene where they're eating, and Goku eats Vegeta's like last piece of sushi. Right. So, exactly. So in retaliation, Vegeta eats his ham. What What's bad is that that scene of them fighting over their food is infinitely more entertaining than the battle with Avocado. Oh, 
It is, because that fight scene is played for laughs, and it's really boring. And I don't like DBZ looking this clean. Yeah, yeah. The fighting is just not as entertaining when it looks this clean. We get Gotenks again, so whatever that's worth to you, kids. Um, <laughs> if you like, if you're a Gotenks fan, this is for you. If you are specifically a fan of Gotenks, hate everything else. If you, you like know. nothing, nothing else in Dragon Ball Z except Gotenks, when you, this movie is for you. Whenever you hear about something that involves DBZ, you're just like, does it have Gotenks in it? And they're like, no, this was in the Frieza saga, and they'll be like, sucks. <laughs> But it's the episode where Goku goes Super Saiyan. Sucks. Sucks. There's no Go Tank. That's, like, that's arguably the best episode of the show. Sucks. Sucks. <laughs> There's no Go Tank. <laughs> he's just vehemently wanting to see Go Tank. <laughs> so he's got access to some editing software. So he goes back clearly, and superposes Go he superimposes Gotenks into every single episode of Dragon Ball Z. Clearly, Bill, the, the greatest episode of Dragon Ball Z was when Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks played volleyball with Super Boo. Uh, oh, of course. How, still, how silly of me. But yeah, uh, Avocado. Um, mm -hmm. I would probably rank Avocado as the worst Dragon Ball Z villain ever. Even worse than Turles. <laughs> worse than fucking Raditz, you guys. <laughs> I would Strongest rather, freeze of my ass, yeah, right. I would rather watch the Cybermen. <laughs> yup. It's, it's real because again, it's too clean, it's played for laughs. Goten and Trunks are annoying anyway, so to see them be the main characters again... <sighs> Just why? And then at the end of the movie, there's this really stupid thing where after they beat Avocado, apparently he's not evil anymore because he's at the party chowing down. Yep. So, you know, nothing. It, in it this continues the trend of everyone Goku knows has to start out as his enemy. That would have been terrible if NGT Avocado was there. <laughs> <laughs> you get baby Avocado. So you get baby Avocado. <laughs> I used to get so confused. What else is there? I used to get so uh, confused when before I saw GT and like I would see like things referring to baby Vegeta. <laughs> and I would Oh like, yeah, that was weird. And I would be like, What? Yeah, that was weird. Um that and also I, I saw um G I saw a little bit of GT before I saw the Boo saga and I was like or I finished the Boo shot Boo saga and I was like, Why is Boo a good guy? Oh yeah. That was really confusing. Also both versions of Boo became good guys. Yep. That bothers me for some reason. You have Boo and then you have Oob. And together Oob is... and together they are Boob. <laughs> no, 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 they're, they're Majin Oob. Yeah, the only reason they're called that is because they couldn't get away with calling him Boob. I mean, come on now. <laughs> we, we, have, we have Avocado, but we can't have Boob. I would have liked that saga so much more if Oob was called Boob <laughs> instead of Majin Oob. They fused. Boo fused with Oob. What are they called? Boob. <laughs> and it would be spelled B-U-U-B. <laughs> now here's the thing. In Dragon Ball Z, that's not weird. Um, because when people... you've got characters like Kakarot and like... Fucking Frieza and Cooler and Broly. It's like a well, not only like that, not, not only that, not, not only that, but when you got people, two people fusing in DBZ, you just take their names and you slap them together. <laughs> exactly, Vegito, Gogeta, Go Tanks, Appar Go Fuel. You know, apparently that Bulma's name means like bloomers or something. <laughs> well. Dragon Ball was obsessed with the fact that she constantly lost her clothes, so I guess that was that was why. Oh yeah, there, there were clearly the greatest moment in the the history of Goku's life was when he got confused because Bulma didn't have anything <laughs> in her pants. Um, <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe they got away with that in the kids show. Where are your balls? Where where are your balls? <laughs> and she thinks he means Dragon Ball. I know. <laughs> and she means oh my god. Oh, it's just it's it's wow, it's something else. Um You mean some poor dragon? <laughs> <laughs> Lost his balls. I thought that was an abridged joke, but then I got to thinking about it more. No, that was straight out of Dragon Ball. <laughs> yep. It's 
really adult. It's it's kind of weird because DBZ is almost more for kids than Dragon Ball is. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because at least DBZ isn't like, look at that dick. <laughs> look at that dick. <laughs> <laughs> Just pointing at Goku's cock. <laughs> there may be a phallic symbol growing out of Boo's head, but nobody nobody draws attention to it. If it were Dragon Ball, someone would have directly called that a penis. Wouldn't it be great if Boo was just like, they were fighting and Boo was just like, wait a minute, I gotta take a leak. <laughs> oh, God. oh, Christ. Yep, that would have been great. Um, clearly, we clearly we're out of things to say about Yo Son Goku and his friends return. What's, what's to say? It's shit. Don't watch it. You've got people. You have better things to do. Yeah, as much as we complained about, go get laid, God. As much as we complained about episode of Bardock, and plan to eradicate all Super Saiyans. They're, at least they're not Yo Son Goku and his friends return. Easily the worst DBZ related thing ever. Yeah, it's it's worse than Bio Broly. It's 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 just that bad. I'm not sure if I would rather watch this or Dragon Ball Evolution. <laughs> Oh, no, I'd probably rather watch this, because at least it's got some cool moments between Goku and Vegeta. Yeah, yeah, you're right. At least that's got that going for it. Okay, so it's not that bad, everybody. This is better than Dragon Ball Evolution, which is not saying much. <laughs> that's like saying getting shot in the foot is is not as bad as getting shot in the dick. Well, that's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Super DM sixty four approved this message. <laughs> exactly. This it's just just you holding up your thumbs and it says, "Don't get shot in the dick." Just like just like the Sons of Sarazawa podcast was a conspiracy so that we could talk to everybody about the problem of plain jizz. It, it, <laughs> and... it turns out that this entire seven part DBZ movie review series was just so that I could bring people the message of it is better to get shot in the foot than shot in the dick. It's like you needed people needed to know this information, so we had to construct this false this illusion of just reviews into kids. Don't shoot yourself in the dick. Shoot yourself in the foot. Or or just don't shoot yourself. That that's an option. <laughs> no, Dylan, that's not the message. They must shoot themselves somewhere. It must be the foot. If you've gotta, I guess so. But not <laughs> if not. You gotta, if you've gotta shoot yourself somewhere, it better be the foot. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, not shooting yourself, if if that option is on the table, obviously take that. <laughs> yes, I, I would say so, but, you know. So, yeah. Just, um, just in case uh, the the opportunity arises and you have to shoot yourself somewhere in your body, pick the foot. So, yeah, the, Yo, Son Goku and his friends return and then disappoint you for 30 minutes is not worth watching. Um, <laughs> that was great. <laughs> And then they disappoint you. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. I guess we can move on. Um, so. Yes. I, this, this is a sh shit. Um, so everybody, we have just reviewed, to my knowledge, all of the DBZ movies and TV, yes, spe and TV specials plus one GT thing. Um, yeah. Fucking worship us, bitches. Um, yes. Um, because we watched. A bunch of DBZ movies and talked about them. Clearly, we deserve public office. Um, oh, clearly, fuck Obama. We're the we're the fucking new new kids on the block. Yeah. Um, and not the band. Oh. So now, just just to kind of do a sort of retrospective thing, you know, before we say our farewells and ride off into the sunset, I thought it would be a good idea if we just list our top five things out of what we've reviewed this week. Um. And I think it's safe to say that nothing we talked about tonight is going to be on that list. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, so just, not even remotely. So are we are we going to do this like you give your number five and then I'll give my number five, or you just want to give your whole list and then I'll give my whole list, or how do you want to go about this? Um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. Whatever you want to do, it's up to you. I mean, it doesn't matter to me. Okay. Uh, let's do it. Um. Uh, since we've already reviewed them, I don't think we have to give explicit reasons. So why don't you go number five? I'll go number five, and then we'll do th we'll do that order. So you go first. Mm, okay. Well, for my number five, I knew it was going to either be Fusion Reborn or Wrath of the Dragon, and even though we had more to complain about with it, I got to go with Wrath of the Dragon. I don't know. I, I rewatch it more often than Fusion Reborn. Uh, maybe it's just because of the giant monster element. Maybe it's because the dragon fist is so kick ass. Um, mm -hmm. 
But maybe it's because you think Vidal's hot. Who knows? Maybe. Uh... <laughs> the jury is still out. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and say that is the number five. Just it's it's number five on my list because it's it's on this list just for how cool it is. So. <laughs> oh yeah, totally. Uh, my number five, surprisingly, is actually the Dragon Ball GT movie, A Hero's Journey. Hmm. I really like that movie a lot because it's just so different from everything else that came out of Dragon Ball. It's just such a grounded human story, and there's very little else in Dragon Ball canon that's like that. Um, it's not about a villain. It's not about saving the world. It's about learning who you are and that you that you can be powerful. And I really like that message. It's a great movie for kids. Um, uh, it's got some problems, not crazy about the whole Super Saiyan thing. But I really, really like it, especially looking back on it now, because I didn't like it as a kid. Um, but that's only because it's not a saving the world giant fights thing. It's a very human story about a child's uh, – it's, it's a character piece. Um, mm-hmm. And looking back on it as an adult, um, it really stands out among, amongst the DBZ crowd. Um, it's a shame that the rest of GT wasn't like this. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's my number five. And I completely agree with everything you just said, which is why that is actually my number four. <laughs> oh wow. Um um originally it was going to be number 5 and then Wrath of the Dragon was going to be 4 but I, again I got to thinking the only reason um, Wrath of the Dragon is even on my list is because it's really cool. <laughs> um <laughs> yeah. So I bumped DBGT up to at number 4 just because of everything you just said it it's just it's a really good story and I was very surprised by just how good it was. So mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why it's on my list. I think you just said everything that I have to say about it, so move on to your number four. My number four is your other pick that you didn't put on your list, I don't think. My number four is Fusion Reborn. Mm. I really like Fusion Reborn. Um, I'm a big Vegeta guy, so whenever Vegeta gets some good shit to do, I'm always happy. Oh yeah. And the relationship between him and Goku in this is some of the best it's ever been. That last moment between them is heartbreaking because they just – they you know there are these two enemies who became these best friends, and there's a chance they might never fight with each other again, and um, it's really sad. Uh, and Vegeta is just um, at the top of his game in this movie. Oh, yeah. The, the Vegeta um, stuff in this movie is really good. Um, yeah. It's probably, um, probably the highlight other than the fusion at the end. Yeah, totally. Uh, the animation's gorgeous. The plot, while kind of derivative, a derivative of the Boo saga, is still entertaining. The fights are great. Um, the animation is sexy. Um, seeing Goten and Trunks, go tanks for that one guy out there. Um, you to see them fight Hitler is fun. Um, Gohan's great in it. Uh, Videl's great in it. It's just a great movie. One of my favorites. Very entertaining. Check it out. Indeed. So uh, moving on to my number three, um, World Strongest. Easily. Fuck, that's mine too. Really? Easily the best of the original three movies. Um, and um, everything that I love about. See, I, I used to like Dead Zone more than World's Strongest, but I've recently decided that that's just because of sheer nostalgia. Um, mm-hmm. On a – on just a objective level, I think World's Strongest is a much stronger movie. It, it's the first one of these that really feels like a movie, and the story is really good. The villains are amazing. Uh, Goku is so kick-ass in this movie, um, mm-hmm. and just the animation blows me away. Yep, uh, basically same thing from here. Uh, yeah, I have the same pick for number three. World Strongest is probably definitely my favorite of the pre-Super Saiyan Goku, Dragon Ball Z stuff. Um, the thing with these movies that always uh, impresses me is whether or not they stand out from the show, and this really does. The animation is gorgeous. I have a lot of nostalgia for it because um, it's one of the only DBZ VHS tapes I have. Um, the, the fights are great. The story, again, it, st- it stands out from the rest of DBZ. Um, I just really, really like it. Uh, it's it's a good it's a good Dragon Ball Z movie. Um, so I totally agree. Okay, um, number two on my list. Um, and I know you said that this one was your f- was your favorite the other night, but I kind of had one that I, I decided that I liked a little bit more. So number two, I put Broly Legendary Super Saiyan. Fuck, so did I. We're gonna have the same top three. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep, Broly the Legendary Super Saiyan is my number two. Also, it's just um. It's Broly, man. <laughs> it's fucking Broly. What's not to like? Um, and it's the only movie that Broly's in that treats him with the proper respect. Yes, definitely. I mean, the other two... I, I like Broly's second coming, but it's not that good. Um, 
I just kind of like it out of nostalgia, but also the atmosphere in that movie is really strong. But uh, this movie is really good. One of the best cinematic DBZ movies. Mm. Uh, agreed. Um, and just th- th- that transformation scene of Broly turning into his legendary form. So badass. Um, yeah. Since Also great premise for a DBZ movie. Oh, yeah, definitely. So since I'm since I'm pretty sure we're also gonna have the same number one, uh, we can just talk. Let's about. let's say it together. Let's say it together. Coolers Revenge. Um. Oh my God, this movie is amazing. Since since you originally had your list the other way, since you originally had Broly over Coolers Revenge, what made you uh, switch the order? Um, pacing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I think Coolers Revenge is better paced. Uh, because I I said this to you before we started recording. I, I had to think which one would I rather pop in now, and I I would much rather pop in Cool Wars Revenge than Broly just because it's better paced. Um, there's a couple because there's a couple parts of Broly that while they're good they're a little slow. Mm. Um, especially the stuff with Goku and um, and uh, the other Z fighters except for Vegeta kind of finding out the ins and outs of new Vegeta. You mean I, I mean the planet by that. Um, and t- and kind of dis- discovering that Paragus is kind of lying to Vegeta, um, it's it's good, but it's a little slow. Um, mm, yeah. Uh, so that's why it's that's why because I love almost every frame of Coors Revenge. It's just an amazing movie. Uh, right. The animation is gorgeous. The fight scenes are amazing, and uh, it's just every every moment is spectacular. Um. Yeah, I would agree, and I mean, really, nobody should be surprised that this is our number one because it's the one we praise the most. <laughs> I don't think we had, we had any major problems with it. I mean, not that I can remember. Um, uh, it's just it's it's one of my favorite. It's probably my favorite DBZ movie villain, um, actually. Oh sure, Coors a badass. I mean, most people their favorite is Broly, but the only reason is because he's the most powerful. Let's be honest. Um, Cooler is just such an interesting character. Mm-hmm. There's so, so much going on with Cooler. Um, he, he's got yeah. he's got great motivations. He's he's powerful. He's the just he's pure evil. <laughs> I'm, I, and I apologize for the noise. I just kicked my computer by accident. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, the thing that I love most about Cool Wars Revenge is that it, it's got the best. It's got the tightest story of all the DBZ movies. Um. It not only works within the canon of the show, which almost none of the ones we were just talking about do, um, it's also got um, – it's also got the most going on under the surface about the the ins and outs of uh, just, you know, cool, the, 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 the relationship between the tyrants and the Saiyans and um, – and being a and being a dictator and how you know thinking you're above others leads to your own downfall with you know cooler thinking that he's above killing a Saiyan child ends up being the thing that kills him. Um, I just love that concept and it's done very well. Um, it's just an amazing story. Yeah. So there you have it, people. Our our top five lists um, very similar. <laughs> Um, almost identical. <laughs> almost identical. Um, except for one movie, and we were. And here's the thing: we both were picking between the same two. It was either Fusion Reborn or Wrath of the Dragon. Yeah, I, I just had to think which one do I rewatch the most often. And and it, yeah, and for me that was Fusion Reborn. Yeah, for me it was Wrath of the Dragon. So I mean, yeah, I mean they're both in that same area for me. <laughs> um, yeah, like likewise. Um, Honorable mentions, though, Return of Cooler. I, I do like that movie a lot, but it's all out of nostalgia. Mm-hmm, yeah. Uh, another honor, honorable mentions. I do want to give an honor, uh, an honorable mission, mention to the two TV specials that we reviewed in the last episode. Yes. Just because yes, they totally. are very good. Um, they just didn't make it onto my list because I like all of these a little bit better for various reasons. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing with the TV specials is that they're both filling in continuity gaps. Yeah. And um, – it's not the same thing as a cinematic experience of Dragon Ball Z. Uh, they're good, but they're not on the same level, I think. Right, and if, if I have to throw out some other honorable, honorable mentions, um, Dead Zone, because while not as good as World's Strongest, it's got a lot of the same elements that I enjoy about World's Strongest. Um, mm-hmm. And Android 13, because that is just such a fun time. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm going to throw out Wrath of the Dragon. I mean, I already kind of said it, but... Uh, it was neck and neck between that and Fusion Reborn. I just have less problems with Fusion Reborn, so. Uh, but Wrath of the Dragon is also excellent. Tapion is a really interesting character, mm-hmm. um, and his relationship with Trunks is really good. I just don't like that ending. Um, right. 
And I just don't like that Goku is the one who kills Harutagarm. I, just, I don't think that he should have been the one to do it. Um, yeah, prom- other one I'll throw out. Uh, okay. Random one, and I know you're not going to agree with me, but I am going to throw out Broly's second coming. Hmm. I have a I have two, I have a buckets of nostalgia for that movie. Um it's just really nostalgic for me. I love the animation. I love um I love the fight scene with Gohan. It's that fight scene with Gohan that saves it for me. Um because the stuff with Goten and Trunks is really annoying, but I love that fight scene with Gohan. So I'm going to throw that out there as well. Yeah. Um, I like that movie. Well, while I while I don't I can't honestly say that I really care for Broly's second coming. It does have its merits and um I think the biggest problem for me is I just don't have the nostalgia for that one. Um, yeah, fair enough, and I do. I don't think I don't think I would like it as much as I do without that nostalgic factor. Because I mean, there are plenty of these movies that I don't really have that much nostalgia for, especially the later ones, Fusion Reborn and Wrath of the Dragon. I saw them fairly later on. So. Yeah, as did I. Um, I have. I just saw Super Thirteen this week, so um, I have no nostalgia for that one. Oh, really? That was the first time you ever saw that one. Yeah. It, it was probably sometime last year, to be honest, that I finally saw that one for the first time and got around to watching it. Um, and then with the only made in Japan stuff, um. This was my first time for Bardock and uh, the Super Saiyan one, and they were both terrible. Yeah, none of the stuff we reviewed tonight was very good. Um, Bardock, I would say, is probably the best of the three. Oh, well, at least the most entertaining. Um, yeah, yeah. For sure. Uh, because the yeah. plan to eradicate all Super Saiyans is boring, and Yosan Goku and his friend's return is just awful. <laughs> it's a tra- oh, it's, it's a disaster. It is a train wreck. Um, Vegeta does not need a brother. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Not at all, and especially not one who looks twelve. Um, exactly. So I, I guess we're we're done, you guys. This this has been this is the conclusion of our seven part series. Um, I would like to thank um the, all the YouTubers who uploaded the clips that I used in the intro. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for letting us steal it. Um, um I would like to um. Uh, you know, uh, thanks to uh, Sid Part Two for coming on for two of the episodes, and uh, of course, thanks to Zazabar for coming along with me on this wild uh, adventure. Um, it's, it's been a it's been a time, man. Thanks for, thanks a lot for asking me. I mean, I I love Dragon Ball Z and I love talking about it. I don't get to do it often enough, and um, it's just amazing to go back on this nostalgic ride and look at back at these movies I loved as a kid and these characters I loved as a kid. Right. Um. Th- that that was my whole thought of it too we really don't talk about dragon ball z on recording very often and i know no. i know i've only done it once and i noticed that you you'd only done it a couple times um, and even that's never the focal point right so um yeah I, I guess that's about it do you have any like announcements or anything you need to make um not at the because t- i know you're posting this after we've recorded it so not at the moment only because i'm going on well I suppose I'll say this because it, um, you're posting this while I'm going to be away, right? Yeah, I'm hoping to ha- um, to upload the first one on Monday, and then after that it'll be one a day, um, best case scenario. Right, okay. So while Dylan's uploading this, I will not be able to access YouTube, or at least I won't be able to really use it. Um, I'll, pro- I'll be checking comments and stuff, but not as frequently as I, I usually do. Um, so if you send me a personal message or comment, I apologize. If, I apologize if I don't take a peek at it like immediately. Uh, it could be a day or two later, and it might be. And it might not be relevant. Um, definitely not going to be any new videos next week. Um, only because I won't be home, and I got a lot of crap coming up. Um, but otherwise, nothing really at the moment. Uh, no, no, no real announcements. Yeah, not really for me either. Now that this is over, I'm, I'm, I'll after I get done posting all of these, I'll probably get started working on a second episode for Kaiju Spotlight. I do not know how long that's going to take um, because I've got – first of all, I'm going to make some kind of intro for it, and I really haven't got that figured out at all. And secondly, because this is not going to be on a schedule. <laughs> Let me just throw that out right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This series is not going to be on any sort of set schedule just because, believe it or not, I do have some semblance of a life. Um as do I, believe it or not. So uh, if you can't wait that long to, to just hear the sweet, sultry sound of my voice, um, <sighs> you can t- you can tune in every other week to Bill's channel for the uh, Sons of Sarazawa podcast. Oh, yeah, there's a good – oh, the, the Moosla thing we should talk about briefly. Oh, yes, yes. In the last episode of the podcast, we came up with probably the, the greatest idea we've ever had in our entire lives. Um, we invented a character. It is called Moosla, and he is the Canadian kaiju. <laughs> Yes, moose, he's, he is called Moose of the Canadian Kaiju. And yes, he is a giant moose. 
Um, he's a um, mutated moose, too. Yes, he's a mutated giant moose. And we, we established a contest in that episode. If, if you follow the podcast, you already know about this. If not, you, I guess you can still enter. Um, oh, well, I don't – there's no date, so – if you want to enter something, go ahead. I mean, there's no date on yeah, there's, it, so there's... just if you come up with something, please enter because we have no submissions yet. Yeah, there's no date. It's just once we get enough submissions, then we'll then we'll uh, judge them or whatever. But what we're gonna do is, I guess, just I guess if you're a person that does art, be it over on DeviantArt or whatever, make fan art of Musla. Um, submit it to us in some way. I don't, I don't know. Uh, send us the file or give us a link to your DeviantArt page or however you need to do it. Yeah, um, if you're if you're a member of Toho Nation on Facebook, post it there. Um, DeviantArt, link it there if you want. Um, PM me, PM me, Super DM, Adam, David, or uh, uh, Kaiju Noir on YouTube if you want to get us, get it to us that way. Um, or you can email it to us or send it to Google Plus. There's a variety of ways you can send it, but I'm sure you'll get. Uh, you'll, I'm sure you'll find a way to get it to us. Right, and we will we will choose our favorite piece of Moosla fan art, um, assuming that we get more than one. And uh, Bill, tell tell them what they'll win. Uh, if you submit a great piece of fan art of Moosla, uh, you will get the following things. You will get a a free copy of Werewolf of Carl Place on DVD. Why do you want it? Fuck if I know. Oh no. Uh, you'll get the director's commentary. Uh, you'll get a something I won't be posting on YouTube. You'll also get a uh, a free history of William Stone. You will get uh, the beginning of, of how I came up with this character. Whoa, excuse me. The beginning of how I came up to came up with this character, all the way up to the very end. Uh, you will also get the teaser trailer for Mountain Walker. Uh, yes, that's actually coming very soon. Um, and aside from Werewolf of Carl Place, you will also get a signed JJ the Jet Plane plushie. <laughs> um, yes. Because on the podcast, we love to talk about how dark and creepy JJ the Jet Plane is. And uh, I have a JJ the Jet Plane plushie from when I was a kid, and it's still in fairly good shape. So um, I'm going to sign it and mail it out to you, and you will get that as well. Uh, you will also get a free copy from Adam's end of Lake of Death, uh, his second zombie movie, and that'll get you ready for his net new uh, zombie movie, Compound of Chaos. Um, and you'll get a free copy of that as well. And uh, also, also he threw in a free copy of TSS 101, the first. Right, he'll send you every episode of that as well. Um, I think he mentioned that he would sign that as well, didn't he? I, I think he did. Uh, I, he'll sign that. I'll, you'll get a signature from me. Um, and of course, we'll mention and display your art on on the podcast. Of course, uh, that that's a, that's a no brainer. Um, you'll get that as well. Yes. So, yeah. So yeah, enter that if you're interested. Um, yes, and you don't have to be a good artist. That that means nothing to me. It's the creativity, imagination, and fun you have doing it. I'm sure that'll come out in the art. Uh, whichever one's the most creative, the the funniest, the most inventive, that's the one that'll be chosen. Not necessarily the one with the best. Um, the best drawing skills, I suppose. And even if it's terrible, there is a chance that you may be the only submission, and then you would still win. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of our podcasters themselves already did one, and of course they can't win. But uh, if you if you want inspiration for what Musla is vaguely supposed to look like, go on Toho Nation and look up um Andres's uh first Musla concept art, where it's just Musla's Musla's head on Godzilla's body. Yeah, take out take out the uh, the fins on the back, and I think that's about what we're looking for. <laughs> yeah, and of course, no tail, because uh, mo- moose, meese, moose, whatever. <laughs> moose is meese, moose, whatever. Um, they have stubby tails. They have so. little stubby tails. Well, we we um, did this research, you guys. Um, we actually spent time on this. Um, we did. So uh, definitely look out for that. Look out for the uh, Legend of Musla fan art contest on the Sons of Sarazal podcast. The new episode of the Sons of Sarazal podcast will go up. Now, here's the thing. Uh, and I'm sorry we're rambling now. We're not even remotely talking about Dragon Ball Z. But um, this last bit of announcement. Uh, the Sons of Sarazal podcast might go up late next week only because uh, I'm going away for Labor Day. Hmm. Only for two days, but uh, I'm still going away. Um, so... And I'll I'll mention this to the other Sons of Sarazawa at some point, but um we may either have to do it on Friday night or do it on Saturday, but it won't get posted until Tuesday. Yeah. That that might ha- that might be how it has to work. Um but we'll see. 
uh, we'll, we'll mention it to the other guys, and uh, we'll see what we can work out. Um, but anyway, that, that's all for me. Yeah, and I guess since he was in two episodes, I, I should um, say go check out Sid Part 2's channel. <laughs> Oh, of course, and please check out Geeky Gentleman every week. That's a weekly podcast. Um, it's insane. It's fun. It's insightful. It's everything. Uh, go check out Geeky Gentleman every week on Zip Party's podcast uh, on Zip Party's channel. Right. So I, I guess we. I guess that's all we have really have to announce. On the off chance that there's anybody listening to this who uh, hasn't already subscribed to Zazbar, go subscribe to him. Um, and I guess that's about it. So we will see you guys whenever. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Not to the fist jumps. It's over. <laughs>